You know, sometimes I wonder if I'm ever gonna run out of shows to talk about. I've covered so many up to this point, like, what if I just end up doing all the shows? Then what? Well, lucky for you, and unfortunately for me, Netflix has just been on a roll lately, putting out new shows almost like every week, it seems like. And just recently, they came out with one that's been right at the top of the Netflix charts the whole time it's been out, called Ginny and Georgia. Now, I've seen a lot of people say this is the best show ever made, and then some people are saying, like, the heck is this garbage? And of course, since my opinion is the only one that matters, I figured I'd check it out. So, let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Morning Brew. Like most of you, I start my mornings out by aimlessly browsing through the same like four websites, you know, trying to get caught up on what's happening in the world, but really just getting distracted by all the nonsense, regurgitated memes over and over again, until finally I snap out of it and realize I've been laying in bed for like two hours. But Morning Brew has set out to fix all that by giving you a daily newsletter Monday to Saturday that gives you all the important news and information you're looking for without all the fluff and unimportant stuff you get everywhere else. Like you can see here, there's a quick catch me up on what's going on with all the crypto stuff, info about US stimulus checks, what happened to the Grammys, as well as all the important news you would need to get caught up without having to wade through the rest of the garbage. Signing up for the Morning Brew newsletter is free, so just click my link down below in the description and get smarter in just five minutes every morning by signing up to Morning Brew. Okay, back to the show. We start off with our main character, Ginny, just enjoying her school day as best she can while this kid over here is just all like... Now, one thing we learned during this scene that I can't play for you because of copyright reasons is that Georgia, Ginny's mom, apparently went alone with a boy up to Lover's Lane or something one night when she was like 15 or whatever and like held his hand for too long and wham, bam, boo da bow Prego. Oh boy. Boy, just what the world needs right now. More secret life for the American teenager. Now, right first thing in the show, Ginny's stepdad gets in a car accident and dies and leaves all of his money to Ginny's mom, which lets them move all the way up to Massachusetts. What are you wearing? You look like Vanessa Hudgens at Rydell High. The fact that your Rizzo is Vanessa and not Stockard is literally everything that's wrong with your generation. Stockard is great. Okay, but Vanessa surprised everyone. Who knew? You lack. You look like you have gangrene. You're gonna lack Massachusetts. It's very patriotic, perfect for a fresh start. So after driving the 20-something hours from Texas to Massachusetts and somehow not killing each other when someone said, you ever wonder why we drive on parkways and park on driveways? For the 500th time, they finally get to where they're going. It's a far cry from the walk up in Houston and the apartment in New Orleans, look at it. It's just ours, just the three of us. Mm -hmm. I'm peeing in the biggest bedroom. <laughs> Coming? But as you might expect, Ginny, being 15, isn't so excited about uprooting her entire life and moving to a whole new place because she's still young enough to not have embarrassed herself in front of the entire school enough times to graduate a year early and move to the complete opposite side of the world to get away from anyone who ever knew you. Like I did. Gross. Totally gross, but I thought you could wear it to school tomorrow. I'm not gonna be white and bougie even if you put me in a cable knit sweater. What if I put you in a charcoal infinity scarf? This is the new thing you're doing now, hate on mom? Come on, this isn't us. We're like the Gilmore girls, but with bigger boobs. Mm, I don't know about that, George. I mean, come on, Lorelai was pretty fine thick, you know what I'm saying? And her voice didn't make me want to power drill my ears off, so it looks like you're 0 for 2 on this one. But all the same, after rolling her eyes some more, Ginny gets to start her first day at her new school. You're new, right? Just moved in across the street? It's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, you sure told him, Jenny. What kind of cultural wasteland are you from? You've never heard of the Ben Wednesday? Yeah, I have. They have that one song. No, they don't. They don't exist. I just made him up. You know, I was on your side, kid. I really was. But then he just had to go and do that. Now, this guy here, who I think might actually be dead because his lips are paler than my legs, this kid is named Marcus, who lives next door to the house Ginny moved into and, of course, does the two-finger salute, which basically tells you everything you ever need to know about him. Later that day at lunch, Ginny makes friends with a girl named Max, who is... a lot. You are going to love my friends, okay? So, that's Nora, that's Jordan, that's Brody, that's Hunter, and this is Abby. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. God, I love southern accents. He's so charming. <laughs> and you know what? Your skin is flawless. Do you jingle? Is that like when white girls touch black girls' hair? Look, if you're being an offensive dick, it's just because we have more Starbucks than black people. So, why'd you move to Wellsbury? But the other thing about Max you need to know is that she is Marcus's twin sister. Now, because she's his sister, when Ginny goes over to Max's house after school to like hang out and talk about teen girl stuff, you know, like who's the cutest boy in school or what if my fingers had fingers or how would you prefer to get murdered in your true crime story? You'll never guess who walks in the room. Oh, do you want a soda? Cause uh, my blood needs sugar and chemicals to focus. <laughs> sure. Cool. You stalking me neighbor? What? No. 
Max invited me. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we just play that one more time? Okay, girls, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Never trust the guy who has his own theme song, all right? But whatever, it's fine, because then she steals his motorbike, rides around the neighborhood, gets off, and gives Marcus a big old <laughs> But wouldn't you know, Marcus already has a girlfriend, I think. Marcus, let's go. Who's she? No one, just the Maxine's dumb friends. So yeah, that was weird. Now Ginny's mom also happened to see everything that just transpired and she's got a few opinions of her own about stealing guys' bikes and all that kissing and necking and stuff. And how was your first day, dear? I've got a ton of homework to do. Hey, you get back here when I am talking to you. I don't want you with that guy or on that bike. You don't understand. Oh, you think I don't understand? I understand, believe me, mommy understands. Yeah, honey, come on. Do you want to end up like me? Look at me. Every morning I wake up and wonder if I'm dying or if this is just what being 30 feels like. I mean, honestly, the best way to deter any teenager from doing anything, just tell them, oh yeah, I used to do it all the time when I was your age. <laughs> Looks like you're turning into me. Now, later on, Ginny gets asked out on a date by this kid, Hunter Chen. I was just gonna ask if you want to maybe hang later tonight, but. Oh, no, she can hang. So, would you want to then? Uh, sure. Great. It's a date. A date? Uh, you mean as friends? Or as a date. You know, I gotta say, this dude might be the first guy named Hunter I've ever seen who doesn't have at least three pop collars and like 12 wristbands. But anyway, flashing forward a little bit, it's time for Jenny's first date ever. And things get off to a pretty great start. So, where in Texas are you from? Austin, and then Fort Worth, and then Houston. Wow. You move around a lot. Must be hard to, like, make friends and stuff. Yeah, it sucks. <clears throat> hey, let's just skip over all that typical first date stuff and get juicy with it. <laughs> all right, slow down there, pal. Ain't nobody getting no juicy nothing on the first date, all right? So the date goes on like this, and they start talking about who had the more awkward childhood, which I would definitely win that competition hands down, okay? I'll tell you that right now. I mean, between making my own Pokemon t-shirts in fifth grade, wearing a trench coat to the mall in middle school, and being the beatbox kid at my high school, it's always such a fun game, you know, to crawl into bed and see which memory I'm gonna cringe about tonight. So that night, Ginny's in a room thinking about Hunter Chen. <laughs> But right then, would you believe Marcus climbs in through her window? Yep. And he has a few thoughts of his own about the whole Hunter situation. What are you doing here? So this is your room, huh? Yes, and why are you in it? Do you like him, Hunter? Why do you care? Do you like him? Yeah, I do. Okay, then. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is trying really hard with the whole brooding, enigmatic bad boy thing. Ooh, I have a motorcycle and long, greasy hair and a face that makes me look like I'm 12 and 35 at the same time. <laughs> That's what? I'm just Maxine's dumb friend, remember? And who climbs through a window? This isn't some... What the hell was that? Sorry, sorry, it's just I know you were on that date tonight and Maxine won't shut up about how perfect you and Hunter are and... I can't stop thinking about you. Okay, this is just straight up some Twilight garbage right here. If I tried breaking into a girl's room at night because I couldn't stop thinking about her, I'd have to introduce myself to my neighbors every time I moved, you know what I'm saying? I guess my hair's just somehow not greasy enough. I can't stop thinking about you. The other day when you grabbed- Also, this dude has a girlfriend? Like, come on, Jenny, what are you doing? He's cheating on his girlfriend with you, and then what? He's gonna break up with her and date you because, oh no, it's fine, he's different with me. Get out of here with that garbage. And then they end up doing the old devil's tango. And Marcus is like, My mom's here again. Gonna get back from that school thing soon, so, you know. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll see you around? Definitely. Hey, um, can we keep this on the DL? I don't want this getting back to Padma. And that's more or less where the first episode ends. So the show goes on and there's just so much show here. It's like a teen rom-com and her mom has a checkered past and then there's dad drama, crime drama, turns out her mom killed her stepdad, coming of age story, this guy. There's just so much everything in this show. It's like it's trying to be Gilmore Girls mixed with every other show ever made. Whether or not you enjoy the show, you gotta admit, it's really trying to do a lot of things at once and not really doing any of them particularly well. 
Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've covered a lot of different shows, a lot of Netflix shows as well. And there's definitely, Netflix has all of their shows and movies and whatever, like, I mean, as far as like the teen related ones, like, you know, they have a, a wide variety of different shows, but the ones that are like teen focused or whatever, there's definitely this weird, like, like they all have the same feeling and the same setup and the same like atmosphere and the same character archetypes and same like, like everything, like the Ginny and Georgia show. It, it kind of reminds me in a way of like Insatiable and like all the other teen shows where it's just like, they just throw so much everything. I've heard other people say this as well. And I definitely agree with it where it's like Netflix kind of presents this almost like more freeing kind of like atmosphere for people who like write and make and, and show run different shows and stuff. Cause you know, if you have places like CW and NBC and ABC, whatever, there's definitely a lot more strict. I feel like about what they can and cannot do or say or whatever, you know, cause it's like network TV, cable TV, that kind of thing. But Netflix being online only, it's like they have a lot more freedom. But with that, I feel like, I feel like they give the people who create shows a little too much freedom sometimes like like they need uh, like uh, another editor another producer to come in and like tell them like maybe we should drop at least three of these 12 storylines you know? like I don't know exactly how it works when they make shows like I've never made a show so I can't speak like firsthand but it's just it seems like they're given a little too much freedom and they kind of need to to wind it down a little bit but that's just me Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. I have a, I have a podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango. Uh, it's like a dating story, dating advice podcast where we read your emails and we just give our thoughts about them as people who are ancient. I have a game on the App Store. It's like a match three Candy Crush type game, but it has my little dudes in it. So if you're interested in that, check it out. If you have any suggestions for shows or movies I should do, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.